Well, hello again. Thank you for joining me here online. Uh, this is Andrew Laszlo with New Life Ministries and Helper Utah. And uh, we are open for business down here at the church. Have been running for a couple of months. You're always welcome. Hope you would join us here if you can. Uh, if not, thank you for looking in online. I will always bring you the message I'm preaching on Sunday and I will share with you what God is doing in the earth today so you can know and understand, so you can hear from him how to get safely through any trial or, or challenge that we're facing, how to receive his protection and his provision, how to walk with God. I'll try to help you uh, uh, with that each week. And uh, so for now, let me share with you about God's Feast of Tabernacles. That's the holiday season that we're in right now. Started on uh, Friday, October 2nd. Uh, and, uh, you know, I like to keep reminding us the reason God has particular holidays to be celebrated on his calendar. He wants us coming back to these, not just coming to the holidays. He wants us revisiting the thoughts and the ideas that are put forth at this time. And the reason for that, he wants us to consider if we received the blessings, the benefits uh, that he intended for us to receive through the celebration of that particular holiday. He wants us to check. If we were supposed to receive a blessing from God, he wants us to check if we received it last year. And he wants to compare last year's situation with today so that we can make sure we continually make progress as followers of Jesus Christ. God planned it so we could keep an eye on ourselves and make sure we're receiving everything God has for us. So that being said, let's talk about the, the festival of tabernacles. It actually started uh, when God led the children of Israel out of Egypt through Moses. And from the moment they, they came out of Israel, or sorry, out of Egypt, uh, God had Moses to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. A tabernacle is a dwelling place. The tabernacle that Moses built, and it was very specifically um, uh, described, Moses built it to the letter of the instruction that God gave him. It had outer courts, inner courts. It had the Holy of Holies. It had the place where animals were sacrificed. And what this tabernacle became was a portable dwelling place for God in the earth. And wherever that tabernacle was set up, God's presence would be manifested in that place. There was a pillar of fire marking it by night. There was a pillar of cloud marking it by day. And it was a temporary dwelling place. It was a tabernacle where God would dwell among his people. Now, as the children of Israel, and remember there were over a million of people following Moses, following God through that wilderness, they lived in small temporary dwelling places for themselves that were called tabernacles. They were places for God's people to dwell. And something to keep in mind about these temporary dwellings, they were, they were made of the... Uh, uh, well, the vegetation that was growing around cedar branches or, or, or pine branches, whatever it was. But you could see through the walls and you could see through the ceilings, uh, the roofs of these tabernacles. And as you looked out the dwelling place you were living in, you could see the fire over God's tabernacle at night. You could see the fire or the, the smoke and the cloud over God's tabernacle by day. Here's the point of the tabernacle of God. And this was what was celebrated from Moses to the cross. And it is still celebrated by Jewish people today, whether they know the Messiah or not. The Feast of Tabernacles is celebrated every single year. And many Christians now are understanding if we understand what God wants to say and do through this Feast of Tabernacles, we will begin to receive more from him and we'll be, we'll be blessed and we'll be prosperous and we'll be healthy because we're receiving the tabernacle revelation from God. So here's the point that communi God communicates through tabernacles. God wants to dwell with his people. He wants you to know where to find him, know how to connect with him, and be able 
to interact with God who's dwelling with you anytime you need him. And in the place where you live, in your tabernacle, God wants you to never lose sight of him, never lose the ability to communicate with him, never lose uh, that intimacy with him. Now, that being said, what is the New Testament revelation and understanding concerning tabernacles that the born-again believer, follower of Jesus Christ, should be receiving from the New Testament understanding of tabernacles? Let me read to you from Hebrews 8, chapter 1. More is said about tabernacles in the book of Hebrews than anywhere else. Now, this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. Now, that tabernacle in the wilderness, it was what it was, and I shared with you the points that God wanted made through it. However, it was a type. It was a, 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 a foretaste of the true tabernacle of God. And we just read that Jesus is the minister of the true tabernacle. And we got a hint about it. God erected the true tabernacle, not man. Let's go to chapter 9 and verse 8. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all, and by the way, that was the holy, holy, holy of holies in Moses' tabernacle. It was a holy place. Only the priest could go in once a year through the blood of the sacrifice. He would go in and pray for the forgiveness of sins for the entire uh, uh, people of God. It says the Holy Spirit indicated that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time. That's back when it existed in which gifts and sacrifice are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to conscience. Let me tell you about something that will be accomplished when we understand the fullness of God's true tabernacle. Your conscience will be cleansed from evil works. Your conscience will be purged. It'll be clean and it'll operate the way it's supposed to. And it will be filled with the peace of God. Let's set our sights on that. Verse 11. Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Do you want to know the tabernacle of God today? It's you and it's me. Created in the image and the likeness of God, born again by God's Spirit coming to live inside of us. We are now the dwelling place for the Most High God. He lives in us in the person of the Holy Spirit, who is the manifest presence today in us, the manifest presence of Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit living in us. Whatever God said about that, to, well, let's review it one more time. What did we see in the Old Testament tabernacle understanding? God made a place to dwell with us where we could see him, where we could know how to find him, where we could stay close to him. And even in the homes we lived in, we should always have an eye on God so we could stay connected to him. What does that say to us in the New Testament? I am the dwelling, I am the tabernacle of God. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Wherever I live, whatever I do, wherever I go, I should never leave sight. I should always be able to keep my eyes on Jesus Christ. I should always be following the leading of the Holy Spirit as I walk daily through life because that's the true tabernacle understanding. I'm never far away from God. I always have my eyes on him. Let's see it this way. Chapter 10, 15. The Holy Spirit witnesses to us after he said before, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering of sin. What Jesus did on the cross took care of your sin and my sin 
forever. He doesn't go back to the cross when we make a mistake. When we make a mistake, please understand this. If we're living in the tabernacle understanding, I, I make a mistake, I, call, I, 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 I make a mistake, I, I, I sin is what I'm trying to say, excuse me. And when I do, I never lose sight of God. He lives in me. He tabernacles with me. I'm in his presence. I receive my forgiveness. I keep my eyes on him and I continue walking with him. Let's go on to some, the rest of this, actually. There's a few more verses I want us to get the main point of. Continuing in Hebrews 10, verses 19 and 20. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, that is us in the tabernacle of God, with God, because we are the tabernacle of God. By the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain or the veil, that is, through his flesh, listen to this. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, having our bodies washed in pure water. I said this a minute ago off the top of my head. I want to say it with the scriptural basis. If you receive, let me change that. When you receive the full understanding of the tabernacle revelation of God, you are God's tabernacle. He lives inside of you. He doesn't leave. You're there by the blood of Christ. You will be there eternally. You will be there continually. And when you walk out the reality of that, even when you sin, God, forgive me. I know you're close. I know you haven't left me or forsaken me. God, forgive me. I receive the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I keep my eyes on you. I see what you're doing. I'm staying connected. I'm tabernacling with you. And I will wake up in the morning and walk with you because I live in your presence. That's the tabernacle understanding. And when you have that revelation, your conscience will be purged. You'll be cleansed. There'll be no more guilty conscience ever to bother you again because you're living in the relationship with Jesus Christ that is available because you are the tabernacle of God. Now, a couple of more things to get from these same verses or this same chapter. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. That's Hebrews 10, 23. On the subject of tabernacling or being the dwelling place of God, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is, is faithful. I'm going to point you back to 5781. That's the year on God's calendar that we just entered into. It's a year to be careful with the words of our mouth. It's a year to speak from God's word those things that will shape and determine our future with God. He said, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Let me put that in the tabernacle understanding for you. Father, I thank you that you've made me your dwelling place. Father, I thank you that the Spirit of God lives inside of me. He tabernacles with me. He doesn't leave me. He doesn't forsake me. Father, I thank you that your Spirit lives inside of me and I will be led by your Spirit every day. I will be blessed and anointed by your Spirit every day because I live with him because he lives inside of me. And I allow that confession to create the hope of being one with God inside of me. Verse 24, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. This is the purpose of the body of Christ. And it'll come to a new level when we are in the presence of God. When we are tabernacling with God, when we know he is in us, we know we are in him. We know we're one with him. We will think about our brothers and sisters and we will compel one another to love and to good works. We know we're called to love and to do good works. We know that. But God says, when you're one with me and you allow me to be one with you and you understand it because you're dwelling in me 
and I'm dwelling in you, you will have the works of faith of being in fellowship with each other and encouraging each other to love and to good works. Here's another way of putting that. The next verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, let me put that in the context of this COVID virus challenge that we're going through. Churches all over the world have been ordered to shut down so they don't spread this disease. Don't get me started on what the media has done to put us in fear. And I don't want to let the Channel 2 News put me in fear. I listen to God. I listen to his word. And God's word says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And especially as you see the day, the return of the Lord, especially as you see the day approaching. Do you know that no government form in America has any right to shut a church down, even for a COVID virus? I'm not saying quit being careful. I'm not saying don't wear, wash your hands. I'm not saying don't wear your masks. The government, according to our constitution, does not have the legal right to shut us down even for COVID virus, which by the way, is not as dangerous as the flu that goes around every year. The COVID virus is the flu. Let me say this. Isn't it interesting? The devil has a worldwide effort to close down churches. God says in the holiday season that we are in right now, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, especially as you see the day approaching. That is a tabernacle verse. That is a verse built on the foundation that God always wants to dwell with us. And he always wants us to dwell close with him. And he wants that so much that he sent his son to pay for our sins on the cross. So that, his, so that his blood could be shed so we could be made holy so that we could become the tabernacle of God. So that he could live in us and we could live in him. And in the understanding of God wanting to be in fellowship with us, he says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Why is our assembling together so vitally important? Because as we love and experience God's love for each other, we experience God and we experience God's love for us. So in the season of tabernacles, God says, I will always dwell with you. And I so much want to dwell with you that when you exercise faith in Christ's sacrifice, you will become my, my tabernacle. You become my dwelling place. I will live in you eternally. You will be one with me. You will always be able to keep your eyes on me. You'll always be able to see where I'm going and follow accurately. You'll always be able to see what I'm doing and become part of it and stay hooked up with me through every trial. And you'll see and you'll remain in relationship with me. You'll receive every blessing that I have for you. You'll receive my protection, my provision. You'll receive all that I have for you in Jesus' name. I pray that over you. I prophesy over you in this year of speaking and prophesying, in this year of becoming one with Jesus Christ in the understanding of God's tabernacle, in the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles, I will get a fresh revelation that God dwells with me and God dwells within me and I become one with him and I will live out the reality of being one with God through Christ Jesus and being one with God as I follow accurately the leading of the Holy Spirit into his will and purposes for my life. I speak that and I receive that for myself and for my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. God bless you. We'll see you soon.